Brown of the PBS NewsHour, and you are watching PBS Books here at the Miami Book Fair in partnership with The Great American Read. I'm joined now by Janet Fitch, about to talk about her new novel, The Revolution of Marina M. Welcome to you. Thank you. The Russian Revolution. Huh? What got you into that? Well, I was history major. Uh, Russia was my field. Uh, it was. So this I goes back. I huh? took Russian in high school. I yeah. took Russian in college. Yeah. I, I'm one of those people obsessed with Russian literature. So it was sooner or later that it would be a Russian novel. How much? So how much did you know of the period? I had a pretty good grounding, but uh, when you're writing about people in history, it's different than writing history. Mm -hmm. You have to have a pretty good grounding in what happened, but it's more the texture of life. You have to know what did a phone, how did a phone work in 1916, yeah. and, and how did the bread ration system work, and what did a bread card look like, and so the devil's in the details. So you had to know about these things and then decide how to use them in fiction. Well, I tend to research and write in tandem, yeah. so I don't get too far down the rabbit hole. Uh, uh, so yeah, I I find out what I need to know to work to write that scene or that chapter. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us so tell us about this book. Well, the, this main character, Marina. Where did well, she come from? Who Marina is, uh, is a uh, 16 when the book opens during World War One, mm -hmm. 1916, because revolutions don't happen all you know by themselves. There's reasons, and it, it's World War One was a terrific disaster for mm -hmm. uh, Russia and for uh, the uh, for the Tsar, and uh, she's a privileged girl. She's the daughter of intellectuals, mm -hmm. and she champions the revolution. And uh, when the Bolsheviks come into power in October, uh, her family comes apart. It's mm -hmm. a liberal family, not a radical family, and uh, she lives the life of the revolution. Mm -hmm. She is a poet, and I had begun the book as a novel in verse, you did. Yeah. First 17 chapters were in verse. Wow. And then Did you I, ever do that before? No. Cuz she's a poet. Yeah. I thought her book should be in poetry, but huh. the first I got to a place where I needed my fiction writer tools mm -hmm. to know what happened and then I was writing fiction. Yeah. So. so so you hit on her as your main character and then yeah. the research I mean, is she based on any any real person? No, I, I had written uh, a short story with a character in America as yeah. an Emma Gray, and I never forgot about her. And I returned to write, I wrote a short story about her, and then I tried to write a novel about her in America, mm. and there were just too many things I didn't know about her. So before I knew it, I was writing a story set during huh. the Russian Revolution. So, well, how far back were you writing about her? I mean, this, this initial short story. Uh, it goes back ago, to or? 20, oh, this was between White Oleander and Paint It Black. I had yeah. a novel that failed, uh -huh. but there was this character I loved. So after, uh, after Paint It Black came out, I decided to write that short story. And I just wanted, I wanted to be with her more. That's it. I mean, people wonder where these, where these yeah. things come from, right? Yeah. It's, so this is a this is a big book, but it started with one character that from that you thought of something else. Right. Not even in this time and place. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Um, you and she's very different. You know, it's again, it's a story about how a young woman um, builds herself. Uh, through events and through reactions to things, decisions that she's made. You know, a girl makes a decision in at 16, and she's she has to live through it, and the woman becomes the result of that. Um, but unlike my two earlier books, I have characters who are full of self-doubt, mm -hmm. whereas now I have a character who is absolutely confident, and I've never had anybody like that. I... I'm full of self-doubt. I'm not used to being with somebody who knows what she thinks. She can be totally wrong. Yeah. Uh, things can go horribly astray as they do. But it was, 
she's a more of a heroine type of character yeah. than I've ever worked with before. So what did that mean for the writing? Did she tell you what was going to happen next? Or? They always do. They do? They always do. You just have to stay really close to the heartbeat of the character. It's almost like leaning your head against their chest and uh -huh. hearing, hearing the heartbeat. Of course, in this case, it's her story. It's a young woman coming of age, right. but it's against some very big history. Right. Right. So it's the kind of things that happen to her are. It's not like what happened to most of most young people. Uh, well, it, we all live in in history. Yeah. You know, very few people are actually at the top making decisions. Yeah. Um, most of us are living where we we see the shadow on the wall. We hear a rumor. We read a newspaper. Mm -hmm. And how people live in history really interests me. And especially now, now it's when I was writing the book. It was about the character. Now it's me. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you get a strong sense of what that's like. Yeah. The the uh, the blurb here on the cover says Marina is a female Chivago, so I mean you can't read something like a book like this about the Russian Revolution without thinking of these models, right? Like a Doctor Chivago. Right. Did you know? Did you have these models in mind? Um. Well, it, it's all goes into the pot. You know, yeah. it's a big gumbo, and mm -hmm. uh, it's Russian literature. It's I mean I encountered Chivago far earlier than than Pasternak's novel I encountered it on the you know on the wide screen of course, yeah. in the little train going across the big snowy expanse right. and the 40 foot high faces of Zhivago and Lara and the uh, I mean that brands you forever yeah what about Russian literature Russian write novelists oh well I I fell in love with Russian literature. I'm one of those people who's obsessed with Russian literature, and uh, I encountered, um, I encountered it for the first time as a junior high kid. I was reading some in English class. They give you some treacly female. It was you know Cress Delahanty. People don't even read that anymore. Mm -hmm. Cherry Ames, student nurse. You know. Yeah. And it did not appeal to me at all. I was infuriated. I came home and complained. And my father gave me crime and punishment. So <laughs> here, see if you like that. Yeah. And I, I that. loved it. Yeah. I loved it. It was so intense and extreme. And people were, you know, they bludgeoned the landlady to death with an ax because of philosophy. Right. It's like, yeah, <laughs> that is. So I was, you know, I was lost. I mean, that was it for me. I took Russian and in high school, I took Russian in college, and yeah. um, uh, it was only a matter of time before I uh, tried a Russian novel. Do you, do you think of this as a, a kind of departure for you from your other books to going back in history and the, the epic nature of it? Yeah, that yeah. that was the departure. You yeah. know, the building of women is is similar, yeah. but the actual amount of time and energy to construct a world was something very new. I'm a writer of place, and time is what also... That, what does that mean? You, you know, place is very important. I need to know where things happen. There's a map in the book. Yeah. Um, my imag that's how my imagination works, very geographical. And, uh, but time is also a place. Mm -hmm. The past is a country as well. So it's constructing a world that I have to, you know, I have to, I, I'm from L.A. I was able to do the first two novels uh, with the foundation anyway of, yeah. of place. But Petersburg, I was a student there in 77, so I knew it somewhat, but I had to learn it the way someone who lived there, who grew up there, knew it. And you did that through books? I did it through reading. I went to Russia a couple times. Uh -huh. I'd also been a student there, so, yeah. you know, from yeah. memory. I read a lot of women's memoirs, so things that weren't intended for publication, yeah. but just women ta thinking about their lives. Yeah. Very valuable. You, I mean, you were telling me before we started, we were, I was commenting on the cover, and you said that you got, you got involved in the details of the cover. Yes, and this is something so rare. Publishers usually don't let the writer interfere because we're generally not visual people. We're right, people right. of the word. But um, I needed it to be historically accurate. The hair mm -hmm. was not quite 
1916, 1917, at one point she bobs her hair, yeah. which people did. Um, but before that, the hair was very full and low, and the mm -hmm. hair had to change. I cut her I asked them to cut her nails because they didn't have manicures uh, during the revolution. Um, <laughs> so yeah, little details, yeah. but the overall design was theirs. Yeah. Was so so uh, I'm I'm curious when you're because it's it's the story of one young woman, but in the history, it, there has to be a balance, right? I mean, you have to let us as readers know what's going on in the history. Yes. So how's, where's the balance for you? Is that something you wondered about as you were writing or Well, worried the balance about? for me is I know so much more about that history yeah. than I want to subject the reader to. Because I, I was, history was my field. Yeah. So uh, the politics of the revolution is very intricate and an American without background, you can only expect people to digest a certain amount. Mm -hmm. And you really only technically need what people require to understand the scene, to understand uh -huh. what's going on, what's yeah. in the air. Um, I had people read it who have trouble following politics. They don't follow history very well. And I, I thought, you know, to construct it solidly enough that Right. Someone who is not a history buff can follow it easily. That's yeah. what I wanted. Yeah. You know, uh, I have to ask, I mean, we're at a book fair where, so every, we assume everybody loves books here, right? Yes. This is a long book in, a, in an age where we hear that everybody has short attention spans. <laughs> right. So do you worry about the readers or the attention span of people or do you think about no, things like I that? No, I think for every person who might think that they have a short attention span. There's a person who wants to lose themselves uh -huh. in a world and just stay stay there, stay lost, binge watch a show over a weekend. Um, I think that people uh, who like to lose themselves in a book will like this. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I, Tolstoy wrote very long books, but very short chapters. Yeah. So you feel like you're moving. Mm -hmm. I think that that it has to move if it's going to be long. What were what were the books we're asking all the authors here? Sort of what's the the book or books that were most important to you as a as a writer or as a reader? Well, as a reader, that crime and punishment falling into my lap, Russian literature, mm -hmm. um, Dostoevsky's uh, sources were Dickens and Poe. Mm -hmm. So I was already Dickens and Poe mm -hmm. uh, as a kid, mm -hmm. uh, and then following through Russian literature, and and uh, I always like a big book, you know, Ulysses, um, Moby Dick. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to lose myself. I also like to lose myself in a book. Yeah, and all of those you named have some history, but they also have place. Yes. Which clearly is important to you. Yeah, yeah it's hugely important to me. Yeah, I, it says here that you're working on the second part. Second part. <laughs> yes, I'm. Now, I'm quoting. You. It's what it says I on the back here. I am finishing the se uh, the second oh, volume of yeah, this, yeah. so it will be a duet. Really, um, and yeah. that's because because I wasn't done with her yet. Mm -hmm. She's so lively and still has far to go. <laughs> All right. Well, this book is the Revolution of Marina M. Janet Fitch. Thank you very much. Thank you. And stay with us here, our coverage of the Miami Book Fair. I'm Jeffrey Brown, and we will be right back.